Yeah, my, my name is uh, Hussam Naum. I'm the Dean of St. George's Cathedral here in Jerusalem. What is your task? Yes, I, I am the secretary of the meetings of the heads of churches here in Jerusalem. When did you start the week of prayer for Christian unity in the way it's done now? Uh, normally we, we start on a Saturday with the Greek Orthodox um, service on the, in Calvary, in the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, but the official date really starts at St. George's Cathedral here on Sunday. I had the impression that the Orthodox are not totally part of this week of prayer. Well, in, in a way, yes, they are not part. But I think the fact that they at least uh, acknowledge that they invite people to come and join in the Vespers is by itself a step towards, and hopefully one day they will be more fully involved in, in the prayer of, for Christian unity itself. So how many different groups are involved now? Now we have, uh, I would say, eight groups are involved from all the families that exist here in Jerusalem. So we have the Orthodox family or the Oriental churches like the Syrians and the Copts. And we have also uh, from the Catholic family uh, like the, the Franciscans and the Patriarchate and the Ethiopians and also with the Protestant family, both Anglicans and Lutherans. What I felt is missing is the whole messianic line of Christian tradition in Jerusalem. Well, that's correct, and that's for a, a reason, because uh, the Messianic group, uh, groups themselves uh, is not fully integrated into the mainstream uh, churches in Jerusalem, and they're not called even Christians, if you know what I mean. So they are Messianic uh, 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 believers, uh, but not fully integrated into the uh, Christian body here in Jerusalem, so to speak. And uh, what is the most important outcome of this week for the Christians living in Jerusalem? You know, on the one hand, I have to say that, you know, uh, uh, this week for, of prayer is mainly attended by uh, expats. Uh, on the one hand, it is a good thing that we have the international community gathered here in Jerusalem in support of the living stones and the living Christians here in the Holy Land, the indigenous Christians. But at the same time, we don't find a strong presence of uh, local Christians, but I have to say this year is the best of all because we are seeing more uh, indigenous Christians taking part of that. But at the same time, I think it definitely it is raising awareness of the, uh, and not only awareness, but I have to say the dire need for getting together more communally as Christians here, both as leaders in the church as well as, as believers, as, as uh, uh, parishioners. Uh, and that is very important, I think, for all of us. And today, talking about the declining number of Christians, the decreasing number of Christians, not only in the Holy Land, but also across the Middle East, there is more need that we need to get together and be united in faith and in love. All the prayers I attended so long, uh, so far, is that the urgent prayers, intercessions for the situation in the Middle East was a very important point this year. Now, I have to say this year is definitely there is more need for prayer, for peace and reconciliation, not only in Israel, Palestine, but also across the Middle East. And that is deriving from the situation in Syria, in Egypt, the escalating situation in Iraq, in Lebanon. And uh, so we see that the trend of violence across the Middle East is kind of be getting more and more serious. And that's why we are in the middle of that and definitely the church needs to respond to the need not only of Christians but also of all people of faith in this region that they seek together peace and reconciliation and for the betterment of the uh, fabric of the society. What can you as, as Anglican, mm -hmm. not as the secretary, but as Anglican get out of it or put into it? Yeah, I have to say that Anglicans, of course, they always have kind of a unique role uh, to be played in that. We can see that in the World Council of Churches, we've seen that in many ecumenical and interfaith as well levels. Uh, Anglicans, you know, not being part of the status quo here uh, uh, and not being, not being even based in the old city, that gives us a kind of a, a neutral role that we play. Uh, and our presence, even myself as a secretary here in Jerusalem and as Anglican, I have kind of more of a free space to move and to be a bridge builder among different churches. 
because I don't have any agenda, so to speak, to play, and uh, I work solely just for to being helpful uh, to everybody. And the Anglican Church, of course, because of its views, its theology, we can connect, you know, both to Oriental and Orthodox as well as Catholic and Western churches, uh, and that is really an advantage that we have, and we use it, uh, I have to say, sensitively, uh, and without, you know, like to boast about it. It's just simply, it's a gift that we use to, to use the, for the best of everyone. What would be your message to my parish, to my ecumenical council back in Switzerland? You know, the message is that, you know, I think, you know, we both have a message, we have a mission, is that to bring Christians closer to one another. Uh, and I think, you know, we have so much in common as Christians, Uh, because our mission is one, our faith is one, and our Lord is one. And therefore, you know, the message that we ask people like in, in Switzerland, in Germany, and across Europe, uh, and in the whole world, is to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Because that is an important thing, not only ecumenically, but also multi-religiously and inter-religiously. It's important for people of faith, for the children of Abraham, to live here in peace and harmony. And I think, you know, reconciliation needs to start at home. And that is what we are doing at the moment.